years ago, love letters were a way to share intimate feelings in a relationship, but all that's changed in the digital world. Within seconds, you can send a personal text or a picture to the person you love, but what was once a flirtatious exchange can now be used as a tool for public humiliation. ABC 17's Christy Reader has looked into this emerging cybercrime and found it's happening all across the country, even here in Missouri. That's right. I talked with a victim of this crime who tells me she no longer trusts people and has no desire to date again. Cybercrimes detectives tell me if you don't want a private nude photo of yourself getting out, don't take one in the first place. But for some victims, it's too late. The photo's already circulating online, and police say you have little chance of getting it back. It's a trend that current laws just don't address. Clicked on the first picture, and, um, you know, as I scroll down, I... Uh, it was almost like it, it was a dream or a nightmare, I guess you could say, because it didn't feel possible. It's being dubbed revenge porn. Searching online, you can find some websites that are dedicated to this effort of getting back at an ex. Most of the illicit photos were originally sent consensually, but a breakup has an ex trying to get revenge. Some victims have no idea their personal, sometimes nude photos are out there. Others are devastated something so private has now become so public. A lot of people, they think that, uh, that that is the quick, easy answer. Just don't take a photo. Um, but it's bigger than that because um, there are people that were posted on there who did not know they were being photographed. Holly Toops lives in Texas and is a victim of revenge porn. While she sent some photos to an ex-boyfriend, investigators are still trying to figure out who posted them to Texan.com. She is one of dozens of women who was going after that website. I met up with her and her lawyer, John Morgan, through Skype. My first duty is to try to get these sites shut down and then try to make sure my client's images and information is not sent to other sites. Last week, they were able to do that. If you head to Texan.com, it's down. Morgan continues working on a class action lawsuit against the site for invasion of privacy. Revenge porn isn't the only problem that can pop up when photos get into the wrong hands. Cybercrimes detective Andy Anderson says they've seen some cases of what they call sextortion. They've got those sexually graphic photographs, and then they extort the victim in those photographs uh, with whatever they want out of them. It can be money, it can be do this for me. I headed out to the MU campus. Within 10 minutes, I found two women whose friends had been through something similar. I've had a friend where it's been threatened to, and she actually had to like contact the family, and it just got really messy. Another woman told me her friend wasn't so lucky. The pictures got out. Through phones, like people would send it to each other, and it just got really bad. And like one of my friends in particular, like everyone in the school got it, and it was just a really bad situation. Most victims want to try and keep it quiet. Embarrassed, more people will find out. While Boone County Prosecutor Dan Knight hasn't handled any cases involving revenge porn or sextortion, he wants victims to know they can get some justice. I think that a uh, reason that we might not have seen these cases is because maybe victims don't understand that this is a crime in Missouri. Um, uh, we don't really have a specific crime for this cyber uh, type of situation, but um, harassment is something that seems like it, it could fit. It's not the, the best possible option in my mind. And that's because Missouri's laws aren't staying ahead of new cyber crimes. Like prosecutor Dan Knight said, in a revenge porn case, depending on what happened, he would most likely file a harassment charge. He would have to prove that the suspect did this to cause emotional distress and that the victim did in fact suffer. It would be a class A misdemeanor. The suspect could go to jail for up to a year. In Florida, lawmakers are taking steps to make this new cyber crime a felony, specifically stating in the legislation that a person cannot knowingly post nude pictures or video with personal identifying information to online social websites. Prosecutor Dan Knight says a law like this in Missouri may help. It looks like they might have the right idea there because it seems to me like it's reasonable that this should be a criminal offense. Um, it seems like our laws here in Missouri aren't tailored for these types of crimes. But searching bills filed in Missouri in the past several years, I found hardly any even deal with cyber crime. And there's nothing in the works now about tackling the issue of crimes involving nude photos. While laws work to catch up, many say education is key. The parents reaching out and saying, thank you, because we didn't know that this was an issue. Now we've spoken to our daughters and warned them about this. We've spoken to our sons to not be that guy. It's important to note that if a victim in this type of case is 17 years or younger, it becomes a child pornography in